G'day everyone, Joe here uh, from Storyweaver Games, and today I'm going to show you something a little bit different. Uh, this was a map which I created uh, from Campaign Cartographer. This is the raw output of it, and you can see it looks pretty dang good. It's actually a 1930s travel style map. That's what I was going for, and um, that style is actually uh, can be found on one of the annuals. Anyway, the map is really nice, but I wanted it to look... Um, like it had been found in the 1930s, you know, like it had been an explorer's pocket. So in other words, I want to do some post work on this very good quality output to make it look a little bit more worn and real. Uh, I, I personally think that when you're handing maps out of the table, if you've got the time, try and make them look not just like the map of the era, but like the map of the era as it would have been used. So what I'm going to do today is show you uh, one of the techniques and one of the tools that I use um, to achieve that effect. So there's our there's our starting uh, output of the map, and that was just literally saved off Campaign Cartographer as a, a PNG file. Uh, you can see it down in here. Um, I, I'm going to call up uh, a program called Post Workshop Pro 3. Now, this product has since been updated and actually sold to another company, but all the principles I'm showing you today are pretty much identical to, to the new system. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm showing you some techniques here that you'll be able to take and use for yourself. So we start, of course, by loading the image. So uh, obviously click the load image button, scroll down till you find the image that you want. And, and here's the raw image output from Campaign Cartographer. Click open. It tells me that it's opening up at a very large size. Now, another tip when you are doing post work with anything from Campaign Cartographer, export at big sizes. Um, export actually larger than you would need to fill the page that you're wanting to print to at 300 dpi. The reason for that is when you're doing post work, you can just get those nice little details coming out when you when you work at that higher resolution. Of course, you know, be concerned about the uh, the speed of your processor and your computer and so forth. Don't blow memory. But luckily, I'm working on a pretty grunty system here. So click on OK. Uh, there you go. Uh, post Workshop Pro uh, loads it in. Now, Post Workshop Pro is what you would call it. it is a programmatic or a procedural filtering system, processing system. Um, once you've got an image in, you can just go to the save styles. And uh, let's say we wanted to go to uh, a drawing style, say, scroll down to pencil, and we can just go show this to me as a pencil drawing. And what you'll actually see here, and I'll just zoom in uh, a little bit you can see that it's it's done a relatively good, good job of rendering it out as a pencil drawing. But that's not really what I'm looking for. I want a lot more um, character than just something that looks like it's being you know, computer penciled, as, as it were. To do that, we're going to have to get inside the style editor. So uh, let me just uh, remove all of these little connections here. In the style editor, you actually wire up different effects. Um, what we'll start with, and, and I've actually already done this for one of them, so I'm going to go back to my styles. I'm going to call up one of my user styles that I just saved recently, 1930s. There it is. And I'm going to unpack um, that. There we go. So here's my filter, which I had previously prepared, and I'm going to walk you through it. The first thing that we need to do is sort of expand it so we can see what we're, doing, what we're dealing with. Each one of these boxes is a programmatic filter. It does something. And you can see that they're wired up with these little connections. Now, here is the source image. This is what we're really wanting to deal with. If we, if we open up this tab here to show us the particular, whatever element we've got clicked on, it will show us how it's going to be rendered. Um, so I'm clicking on the source image. I'm going to click on this little button here, and I'm going to wire it up to the comics um, filter. So you can see the comics filter here gives us uh, a relatively interesting effect over here. I'm just going to uh, reduce the size of that slightly. It, it literally makes this sort of, oh, how would I put it? Basically what it does, it goes through every single black area or every single dark area and it creates a vector around that and then inks that in for us. So it gives us a, an inking effect, which looks a lot like the type of lino presses which they would have had in the 30s. So it's this, this printed page, but it's too much. It's actually too grunged up for us. And it's also very gray. So then what I've done is I've created a threshold filter. And the threshold filter takes two, uh, basically looks at a, an image, 
uh, determines the number of colors through this flag here, the, uh, in this case, two, and then you can set a threshold value. So you can see as I reduce that threshold value, my map gains or loses features. And so I had it set, I think about there, it was fairly thick. But what it does is it knocks out that gray area. Now, this line here, as you can see now, collects down to a blend space, but we'll, we'll get to the blend space in a, in a, in a moment. I want to come over to this textured pencil drawing. Currently, it's not showing anything because it's got no input. So I'm going to take the image, connect it to the input here. And now that gives us a pencil drawing, a, a detailed textured pencil drawing, which is, which is quite nice. I mean, if, you, if you zoom in on it, you can see it's, it's done a pretty good job. But if we were to mix that with the printing look and that, if we were to mix these together, we would get something that looks a little bit more like it's genuinely been printed in the 1920s, 1930s. That is what the blend function does. So you can see comic input, inputs to threshold, threshold comes to the top of our blend space. Image goes into the textured pencil style, which goes into the bottom of our blend space. And that's what it gives us here. It gives us now a map which has an appropriate level of detail. Um, but it's it's you know so it's readable but it still looks like it's being manufactured now here's where it gets fun i wanted to make sure that i had this printed on on something that looks like paper that had been folded and crumpled a little bit so to do that what i did is i i created a texturizer i um i think we've got something wrong in this hookup here Right, let me just get rid of that. I'm going to put that up to the texturizer up here. There we go. So the output of the blend goes to the texturizer. And uh, if we look at that now, you can see that it's got this folded paper sort of look to it. And the texturizer is actually a beautiful function. Um, you've got to be careful not to overdo it. I've chosen a particular style of paper, but there are many other different sorts of options within paper to choose from. For example, if I went to say a crumpled piece of paper, uh, it's gonna give me a very crumpled looking map. Now that's that scale is way off. So if I was to bring this up, it would actually calculate, and to some extent it calculates the maps, uh, the, the, the inking lines along what it would assume are the contours of the paper. It does a relatively good job of that, but not great. Now that's way too crumpled for what I'm looking for. So I'm just going to go back to the uh, the previous paper that I I had before. I think that was paper number four. There we go. Lovely. And I'm going to uh, bring that scale back down again because I quite like those folded lines across it. I thought they looked good. And finally, the output of that goes to our layer, goes to our final output layer. So now, if we were to come back to the compositing menu, you actually see now we've got this map printed at. Uh, you know, it's starting to look really, really lovely but there's no color in it. And uh, that's actually where that blend space uh, mess up was before. So I'm gonna go and correct that now. Um, you can see when you go back to the style editor, it reduces everything to fit on the screen. I'll just draw this out a little bit. Um, and I'm also gonna zoom in so we can see these a bit better. So I would like a little bit of the original color of the map to come through in the final edit. To do that, I'm going to need another blend space. So I'll do, as I'll come to my styles, I go to user. Um, actually, sorry, no, I'll go to uh, building blocks. I will come down here to utilities and it can be found. Blend, blend, blend. There it is, blend. I'll put the blend there. So I'll take this output, put it in the blend space. I'll take the original image, put it under the bottom. And now if we look at this, you can see it's no different because the top layer currently is 100% op opacity. But if I just reduce that slightly, ever so slightly, not too much because I don't want everything coming through, just a little hint of the color. There you go. We now have our map looking slightly colored, um, like it's been produced on a, on a pretty dodgy ink printer and it's all ready to rock and roll. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on save. I'm going to save this off. I'm going to call it uh, J Coast Map 1930s. There we go. This is perfect for a pulp, uh, a pulp action game. And of course, the very last thing that you would do is you would uh, you'd actually render out this, this image in its entirety. So let's just do that.
do that now. <laughs> I just know it's very important when you're saving that you, you must make sure you know where you're going to be saving that. I'm just going to save this to my desktop so I can bring it up nice and quickly. There we go. And if I look on my desktop, have you saved to my good friend? Okay, it's done. And now let's take a look what that looks like. I'll just move this onto the screen here so we can see it. There we go. Now, you can see that the uh, the quality of it is, is much higher than what was uh, showing on the screen, which is, is fine. But you can see now, if we zoom on in and look at that detail, it's got this lovely um, hand-drawn or, or, sorry, uh, lovely inked sort of imagery. So you can see it's been a hand-drawn map, which has then been printed uh, on, a, on an ink. You've got these lovely little hair-raising pieces here. It's incredibly detailed what, uh, what this program can do for you. It gives you a real sense of something that is printed in the time that it was made. Um, now, it takes a little bit of work and, and it does take a, a lot of um, getting used to this, certainly this, this idea of creating programmatic filters. But remember, you create one filter, you can save it off and you can use it on a whole slew of your maps. So uh, for some of my pulp action adventures, I would do a whole bunch of different travel maps of different imaginary lands. And this one was a, was a um, Asian continent. And then you can process them through this um, and they just look absolutely glorious when printed. Really makes that just that little bit different. That trick can take your maps from being really good to publish pro level in, as you saw there, less than 10 minutes. I'll talk to you next time. If you've got any questions, please ask. Talk to you next time.